Um, so as I mentioned before, so we're actually taking container technologies like Docker and we're using these uh, in production and at scale. So uh, certainly the things that we're going to talk about will can also apply when you're doing it in develop uh, and testing environments. But there's a couple of things that are really, really important uh, to make sure you're considering for production. And we'll talk through a couple of those, uh, those right now. Mainly they are resource optimization, including things like costs, orchestration, and monitoring. So let's dive into the first one of those. Uh, so let's say this is a simple example where you've got a single host and that host can be, you know, a VM, it could be a laptop, uh, like Kevin's laptop, it could be a server, a shared server that you're running at your organization, but whatever that host machine is, and you've got a workload that you want to run on there. And let's say that the size of the workload and the size of the host are basically meant to represent the resources available to that. So you can see that this one's not really optimally sized. We've got a you know a small workload that's using up some percentage of the host, but not the not the whole thing. There are really three different things that we can do if we want to be a little bit more efficient uh, with our resource utilization. So the first thing you could do is we could allocate more resources to that actual workload. So something we're not showing, but that Docker supports is you can basically set requests and limits uh, on those workloads. So I can request a certain allocation of CPU, or I can request a certain allocation of memory. And then of course, Ignition has arguments that you can pass the JVM to allow it to use a certain amount of memory. So we can be a little bit smarter about using the resources that we have allocated to us. Uh, another thing we could do is we could say, well, we've got that available capacity. Can we use that for other services? So like uh, Keith mentioned, you know, there's a number of other smaller services uh, that we can run. Um, you could have a whole bunch of these gateways. If they're not really doing a whole lot, especially for, for development and testing, um, you can probably cram a few more on there. Uh, for us, we have uh, like a Git front end, which doesn't use the same uh, quantity of resources as Ignition does. And so we're able to cram, you know, multiple services onto that same host to be, again, more efficient with our with our usage. And then the final option, which depending on your environment, you may or may not have, is you can actually shrink the host down. So if you're running this in, let's say, a cloud provider where they have different SKUs available to you, you, you can't necessarily pick the exact RAM and CPU that you want to allocate in storage, but uh, you maybe have a different family of, uh, you know, of, of VMs, let's say, that you can, you can use. So those are three um, options you'd want to consider for optimizing your resources. And in all of these cases, especially when you're looking at changing you know, SKUs of a, of a VM, uh, there could be some cost implications to that as well. Uh, so the next topic to kind of talk through is is orchestration. So you picture a conductor who's orchestrating an orchestra, and you know when the examples that we're showing are all basically running on a on a single host. So this is an example where my workloads are. Let's say I've got a single ignition gateway, I've got a database. Well, I'm just going to put those on a single host running Docker, and I've got a gateway and a database that are in a container. That's uh, that works really really well for development and testing. Now let's say we want a more complicated example where we're actually going to be looking at having those same two services, but maybe we want to add high availability to it and we want to add redundancy to it. So if you uh, look at the, oops, there's the next example. Now you can see, well, we've got three different nodes, which is what uh, uh, orchestrators tend to call the, the hosts. Um, and I want to have a primary and a secondary ignition server. And I want to make sure that those two gateways are spread across different VMs, different nodes, in case there's a connectivity issue. Same thing with the database. I want to have a replica that's set up. And I want the, the backup replica of that database to be at a different VM than the primary in case there's a problem. Maybe I want to have some available space open on one of those VMs so that if I do have a problem, I can move that workload over. This is a really complicated um, scenario to have to manage yourself. And so this is where orchestrating tools like Kubernetes or Nomad or even Docker Swarm come in handy. So this is what we're using in production, and this is what a lot of customers are already starting to use. And what's nice about this too is that under the hood, it's all Docker or a comparable or compatible runtime like Container D that's actually running those containers on the node, but you have this kind of higher level that's basically scheduling these workloads to these different nodes and handling some of those other common services like networks and volumes and uh, exposing those out to, uh, to be accessed out, uh, externally. So that's, uh, that's orchestration. And then the, the final point here is uh, really around monitoring. So folks in the industry may hear this called uh, observability, but this is where you wanna have health checks to make sure that your services uh, like the ignition gateways are actually available, your data, databases are actually available. 
you can collect metrics on those services. Let's say I want to monitor the, the CPU and RAM and storage, and I want to know ahead of time if they're approaching some limit that I have or if it's going to bog down other services that are on my machine. I want to collect logs, so I want to know if there's certain error message from Ignition. I want to be able to respond to those. If I'm uh, filling up my, my database you know, storage and I'm no longer able to write my write-ahead logs and I'm losing records, that's something I want to know about. And then for all of those cases, I probably want to set up alerts. So if I'm approaching my limit, my storage limit, I want to get an alert so that I can proactively react to that before I've got a problem like my storage is already already full. Or for a health check, if I'm failing a health check, I want to know about that you know, as soon as possible so that I can go in and start to investigate and troubleshoot and do something about it. And then ultimately, if I'm, you know, going to be making the service available to others, like let's say folks internal to my organization, I might have a, an SLO or a service level objective. So I'm going to try to provide, you know, 99.9% uh, availability of this service. So when I'm scheduling maintenance windows or I'm doing other activities, I want to make sure that I'm meeting that target or uh, be able to track how closely I'm, I'm getting to that target. And the screenshot on the right is just a very simple example of what we're doing for production where we're showcasing the uh, the CPU load on an ignition gateway, as well as actually pulling in the logs that we're formatting um, from that ignition container. So those are some some major production uh, uh, use cases to, to think about and some examples of how we're doing things in production.